Welcome back to the Garden Hutch. Today we harvest the vegetables from our raised beds. Let's get going. So today we thought we'd do something a little different. Uh, we're always kind of putting in our vlogs, like our daily picking and that sort of stuff. But we get asked quite a bit by friends and family and on our Facebook page, what's it like just to pick the garden through a day? So today we're gonna go through, we'll go through each of our little gardens here and uh, we'll show you kind of what we're picking right now. Um, so today we're gonna start here in what we call the old garden. Um, primarily we're gonna get a bunch of cucumbers. Uh, we might have a couple of the, um, yellow squash. Uh, we may also end up pulling a few of the sweet potato leaves. Not quite sure, but we'll see what we got. Alrighty, so we're just kind of going through and some of these cucumbers, as you can see, they're growing a little tall for less to grab there. Uh, but before we started picking, I was just going to show you a few of these. We like to pick them every two to three days. That way it gives us a few different sizes of pickles, that kind of stuff. So you can see there's some larger ones and some smaller ones. It's also important when we go through to uh, pick all of these that we look for any squash bugs. Uh, my wife is not a big fan of smashing them, but she's really good at calling them out so I can do it. Um, and then every once in a while through here, you'll find one that has been on here uh, a bit too long, as you can see there. Um, and this one is, we won't pickle him, even though you probably could if you really wanted to. What we like to do with these bigger ones is we'll just skin them and slice them and put them in our um, tomato and cucumber salad. All right, so let me put this down here and I will help Leslie pick these before I get myself in trouble. All right, so we went through and we picked all of the stuff from here. We had, you know, this over here, we have our slicing cucumbers and our pickling cucumbers. And we had, as you can see, we have a huge basket full, a lot of really nice. You want to show us what you got there, Leslie? Yes, so these are our slicing cucumbers. Um, we usually share with friends and family, of course, when we have way too many. But I usually will cut these up, put them in some water. It's awesome. Or we use them in our cucumber tomato salad. And then I wanted to show you two different sizes of the pickling because these are usually the ones that I like to put in a jar and pickle for us to eat later on whole. Now with this size, as of course, as the heat builds and the summer goes on, they get bigger. So I take these and I will slice them up and do pickled chips for our pickles. So you can put them on hamburgers, just eat them right out of the jar, pretty tasty. And we got a yellow squash. So we're super excited. So now we've moved up to what we call the top garden. Uh, predominantly what we're gonna pick from here are the Roma tomatoes. We'll just take those inside and we will roast them with some peppers. We'll freeze them for the winter time. Um, now, one thing I wanted to go over real fast, our Roma tomatoes, they're towards the back end of their life cycle. You know, it is the end of July. Uh, soon it'll be August. The, what, the Roma tomatoes are what we call a determinate variety. So you're only gonna get X number. So the actual growing season doesn't really matter. The Roma tomatoes will put off X amount of Roma tomatoes and then they'll die off as opposed to, you know, like your cherry tomatoes, which they'll go until they uh, hit their first freeze or die out or whatever. Um, anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull these, but we'll take a real quick look at things that we're uh, also uh, picking from the side. So we are currently picking lots of purple holes. The vast majority of our purple holes, though, come from... Uh, we call it the big garden. We don't film it often because it's really weedy and um, it's not quite as nice as these raised beds. But we'll kind of show you whenever we pick them how many that we get. We're also getting uh, ground cherries on the daily. They are delicious this time of year. They're really good. Uh, we found that we like them a lot in the refrigerator. They get cold and they get sweeter after a couple days in the refrigerator. Really nice treat this time of year. As you can see through here, our Roma tomatoes are, there's gonna be a lot of them coming off. Leslie's already started on that and we'll take a look at her bucket here in just a minute. And then, ah, oh, look at that. That's a unique looking Roma tomato, huh? <laughs> and then over here, um, our beef masters, we're still slowly, they're still slowly putting on. Um, here in about 10 days, the weather is finally looking like it might break for a little bit to take the low temperatures in the evenings down back into the really low 70s or upper 60s. 
at that point we anticipate getting quite a few more blooms and the tomatoes set but you can see we are still uh, getting some so it's worth the effort of keeping these alive until they sort of bounce back if we get um, some better weather coming through and then this squash is actually doing really well we put it in and then within one day we lost we had a squash up there in that one corner and it was just murdered by all kinds of insects and such but um, the other ones seem to be doing really well uh, you can see as on this leaf right here of course grasshoppers there's not a whole lot you can do about grasshoppers right now there's a drought and so grasshoppers are going where um, you know there's uh, plants that are alive of course we're keeping our plants alive which means that the grasshoppers want to come and eat them so so how the Rome is looking well I would say we got a basket full I've got a couple in here that are pretty good size I left a few on the vine that are starting to turn red so they'll get a little bit darker but as you can tell I mean they're pretty healthy and we are super excited to roast these guys today mm. All right, let's go hit up the pallet bed and pick the peppers and the cherry tomatoes. Let's do it. You'll have to excuse me, we're uh, sweating a little bit out here. It's uh, about 7.30 in the morning and it's already over 90 degrees um, with the heat index pushing close to triple digits. So anybody lives in almost anywhere in the United States right now, I guess you're all going through the same thing. So uh, one of the things and the reasons we're doing this is because we kind of want to show everybody the advantage of raised bed gardening um, and how having these raised bed gardens, if you, uh, you know, tend them correctly, uh, you put them in correctly, uh, but you can still garden and get a lot of food throughout, uh, you know, like a summer, a rough summer like this. Um, and, you know, that climate's changing. Who knows, um, you know, where it's going to go. I have no idea. I don't think anybody really does. But what we do know is that summers in Arkansas are always going to be a challenge. It doesn't matter. It's been that way since the, you know, since my grandfather was a kid, according to him. So anyway, one of the things to kind of keep in mind is there's going to be challenges every year. You're going to have to overcome these challenges and doing things like raised beds where you kind of plant them and have, uh, you know, the organic material in the bottom to help with water, that kind of stuff. It's a great way to ensure that regardless of what mother nature throws at us, that we'll be able to get a harvest. So the pallet bed, many of you I'm sure have seen our video of building this little area. It's come a long way since we uh, first started it, but uh, we are currently getting melons galore. Um, I say melons, actually what we're getting right now are cantaloupe. We haven't gotten any watermelons yet. We have a lot on the vine that are ripening and such, and it's one of those things we definitely want to let take its time, but I don't know if you can, the camera does it justice, but over here we just have, I mean, there's, I don't know, there's easily six, seven cantaloupe that you can see, and we have three large watermelons that are coming on. Um, you know, so next year, I think because with the heat this year and the way that we and our neighbors enjoy melons, we are probably going to have one whole bed for watermelons and then one whole bed for cantaloupe. And actually, that'll probably be where um, our corn is this year. So, and then moving on, Leslie's over here diligently going to work. This is going to be a chore today. Um, these banana peppers are fantastic you can see the color on these the taste is phenomenal we like to take them and uh, what do you got there a big pepper oh i'm sure it's delicious they're so good no yep. so anyway so, so this is we're getting a bunch of these we'll roast them with our tomatoes and we'll put those up and then of course the all-star bed over here we're still getting kale and swiss chard um this time of year these types of meals go a long way next year again we're not going to put these guys in because i'd like the swiss chard and the kale to get bigger it's not getting as large as i would like but one of the good things about that is the leaves stay tender for significantly longer you know you don't have to blanch them or anything when they're that small but because we do eat so much of it i'd kind of like to have it uh, in a bigger bed so as we mentioned before all of our peppers will be moved over to the uh, top garden and then um, our raised bed garden will redo. So this will be the next top that we go into after the peppers and we'll show you after we get done uh, picking them. But as you can see, there are cherry tomatoes all over this little four by four bed. So this is another thing that we'll probably increase the room on next year. And I'll probably try to do like a dozen of these. You can see how many there are just off of these. The reason is, is these, um, they're called sweet million 
and these tomatoes when they when you roast them and put them in pasta it is one of the greatest things that we've had here on the homestead and we eat it often so the more of those we can grow the more we can freeze the more we freeze um, the more food security we have through the winter time well i think we got some tomatoes this bucket is almost uh three and a half gallons and it's loaded you can't see the bottom basket where we had the romas i had in here big old bell pepper i'm telling you like this this is cherry tomato heaven we're super excited for today's pickings and most of this is going to get roasted so yeah we're we're excited Well, I hope you all enjoyed coming along with us as we picked the garden today. Uh, just a few things, like we didn't end up, we're leaving the cayenne peppers on there. We want to let some of them turn uh, colors. My uncle wants to make some hotter salsa, so we've been picking the green ones. So we're going through about a four week period where what we're doing is we're allowing the uh, cayennes to stay on the plant. It just makes them hotter, that sort of thing. Um, we also didn't have to pick any salad today because we have a little bit left in the house from yesterday's. But overall, that kind of gives you a pretty good idea of what we pick. And we usually will get about this amount every two to three days or so. We try not to pick every day because we don't want to heat the house up every day with it being, you know, 110 degrees all the time. So doing it every other day, sometimes the cucumbers are a little bigger than what we normally would use. But you learn to adapt and keeping yourself cool inside, it, it, it's worth the, um, you know, it's worth the inconvenience uh, in the picking. But as usual, I would like to say thank you to all you folks who have made it here till the end. We do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like. If you have not, consider subscribing to our channel. It goes a long way in helping us reach our goals, and it's free for you. Until next time, I hope that all you folks take care of yourselves. Peace.